Hello everyone, Daniel Hubach here from Fireless Forge Arts. You can check us out at www.firelessforge.shop. That's all one word. Uh, today, today's video is about the making of the Elder Wand. It is one of our most impressive wands, I'm proud to say. Uh, it is made from Elderwood, which is spelled A-L-D-E-R, uh, which is the tree that Death actually plucks uh, the Elder Wand from in the story of the Three Brothers, which makes us even more awesome. So today I just got a new order for it. Uh, the Dumbledore wand you can find on our website or you can find us on Etsy. Again, www.firelessforge.shop and you can find that wand there. Uh, and this video is the making, part one. What we're about to go do is collect the wood that we need for it. All right, so I live on about uh, 40 acres of land here with a beautiful river running through the back of it in uh, Northwest Wisconsin. Um, and the tree that we're looking for it's more of a bush, it's kind of a small, a small tree, large bush, uh, which grows down in the floodplains and along the edges of the creek. So we're gonna be heading down here towards the river and we're gonna find a suitable tree. Uh, the wand in question, the elder wand that we make, is about 13 to 14 inches long and it has a diameter of about two and a quarter inches at its largest, its, uh, largest diameter. So we need to find ourselves a branch or a trunk that is at least 14 inches pretty darn straight and uh, at least three inches in circumference. Alrighty, so after just a little bit of searching, I quickly found what I'm looking for. Uh, this here is an alder tree or a small, like a small tree, large bush. Um, and you can see that throughout this floodplain is just covered in these guys. Um, so I'm not at all concerned about taking one of them. It's not gonna harm our, our, our mini ecosystem here at all. This one has got a pretty straight portion right through here, um, and it's definitely large enough uh, for the wand uh, as I need it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm not just gonna take that part, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off at the bottom here uh, so I've got the whole thing. And then we'll cut it to size in a little bit. So this right here is the curve, and we, uh, I always take things pretty much at the curve, because we're gonna want this portion right from here to about here, and then all the rest of that can be different wands in the future. And there we go. It's a little bit long, uh, but I always like to start out with some, give myself an extra, oh, I've got an extra three to four inches on the end there, but that's okay. Always give myself extra material to work with. There we go. So the next part of the process is going to be to strip all the bark off of this um, and start the carving process while it's still wet. There are some woods that I can carve wet and they won't crack bad on me and it'll be fine. Um, and there are some like cherry, which uh, I have to let dry first, because if you just strip the bark off the wet wood, it'll crack really bad. But with this stuff, I should be fine. All right, so now we're ready to start taking off the bark on this piece of alder here um, and start to carve out the basic shape. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it to length and then we are going to mark on here where all of the uh, little beads that run along the length of Dumbledore's wand. Um, and we're gonna mark out where those are gonna be and then we're gonna start to carve the shape into it. All right, but first of all, of course, a little introduction for my tools. So these are the primary tools that I use when I'm carving wands. I usually don't use much in the way of power tools unless I'm putting a core in a wand, in which case I do need to split the wand in half, um, cut router a uh, groove down the center of it, and then glue the wand back together again because that's how we get a core in there. But these are my primary tools. 
So here I've got my bulk cutting knife right here. This is actually an old kitchen paring knife, but I find that it works extremely well for removing bulk material from uh, my wands. So I'll use this to strip the bark and I'll use it to get the basic, um, basic tapered shape into the wand. This is my other favorite knife. This is a little pen knife and I, it's got two blades, but I primarily use the short one. Uh, the short one I use for a lot of the detailing work, for getting um, things symmetrical. Uh, so a bulk, bulk amount of the work that I do right here is with this little pen knife. The wood burner is not used in all of my wands, but it is very important for Dumbledore's wand because of the speckling or the dotting that is along the shaft of his wand, which I do use a wood burner for. This actually serves two purposes. One, it gets me the very cool look very natural look uh, that is needed for the wand, but it also lightens the wand. It actually sucks moisture out of it and causes the wand to be lighter so that it feels feather light in your hand. And this right here, this little round bit, is the point that I use when I'm making Dumbledore's wand. Uh, we will probably not quite get to this part of the process today because we need to get the wand stripped. Um, we have to get it cut to the proper length and we have to let it dry out a little bit before we move on to the wood burning process. Now, of course, I have a little tape measure. For getting all the dimensions correct, I have an X-Acto knife here for doing some of the detail work that I can't get with this, and very crucially, I have my knife sharpener. And this is always the first step, is to sharpen everything up and make sure that we're ready to go. Preparation is crucial. Ollivander's take on alder wood. Alder is an unyielding wood, yet I have discovered that its ideal owner is not stubborn nor obstinate, but often helpful, considerate, and most likable. Whereas most wand woods seek similarity in the characters of those they will best serve, alder is unusual in that it seems to desire a nature that is, if not precisely opposite to its own, then certainly of a markedly different type. When an alder wand is happily placed, it becomes a magnificent, loyal helpmate. Of all wand types, alder is best suited to non-verbal spellwork, whence comes its reputation for being suitable only for the most advanced witches and wizards. Uh, all, all the bark is off of it now, and the next step is going to be to mark out with pencil uh, where our beads are going to be on here. This is going to be the handle right here, and this is going to be the point of the wand. And we're going to mark out where the beads are going to be, and then we're going to start to... All right, now we have the pattern for the wand all laid out. Each one of these lines right here, which wraps all the way around the shaft, um, mark the top of one of the beads. So in Dumbledore's wand, of course, we have uh, six beads total, and then we have the handle right here in the, the Elder Wand, I should say. Um, with this being the smallest, they grow until they hit this one, which is the biggest. This one is slightly smaller, and then we have the cap right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to start the process by removing the middle material. We're going to take this down in size and give ourselves an idea of where these beads are going to be located. Then we're going to have to taper the wand, since of course the wand is thinner at this end than it is at this end. Alderwood is an excellent wood to carve wet because it has uh, such a it has such a soft um, structure to it, uh, at least until it dries and then it becomes harder. Um, and so at this point, it's almost like carving butter, and you see the flakes just come right off of it. I use two different strokes while I'm carving this. I use one stroke like this that is coming towards my hand, and then also the one that is going away, and that's how I cut out that middle section. And yes, I have cut myself many times. All right, so we have a great start going here. We have the basic shape is laid out. Now, you might ask why I didn't taper the wand before I started defining the beading. Uh, and something that I have noticed in my work uh, and with my experience making wands or swords or really anything that I do um, is that it's usually not too early to start detailing. You can start detailing things pretty early, and the reason that I like to do it that way is because it gives me a visual idea of how much material I have remaining, how much I should take away, um, it gives me a visual layout for how I need to proceed. Uh, when you're working with wood, it's very important to know how much material you have and how much you can safely remove, because once you take it away, you can't put it back on. 
All right, so we're gonna continue the process now by starting to taper it uh, with this, this being the smallest bead, this being the largest, and then this one needs to be a little bit smaller and the back here needs to be a little bit smaller too. So here we are, we're really progressing along now. I'm starting to go from just the main shaping to now some of the detailing. And I'm working on that small knob right before the big part where the handle starts. And that is like a sheer cut right there, where that knob right there by my thumb, uh, it stops, it has a hard stop right there as the handle shaft cuts into it. And that spot right there that I'm carving uh, is also where we paint the uh, symbols on it, including our symbol and the Deathly Hallows symbols. As you see, I often have to flip the wand back and forth to get the carving just right and to give myself the leverage that I need to uh, make nice smooth cuts. All right, so the shape is really coming along here now. We've got all of our beads very well outlined. We're almost down to shaft size here. Just a tiny bit more material to remove. We don't want to go too thin on this because, of course, it is made out of wood and we don't want to risk it uh, being easily broken. We have a little bit more detailing to do now on each one of these beads. I can see that this one needs to drop down in size a little bit. Uh, they almost all need to drop down just a little except for this one. This one stays pretty big. And also it stays a little bit more blocky too, whereas say this bead right down here is uh, very smooth and it's, it's almost not there if you look at the movie prop. Alright, so we're going to get out the little pen knife and we're going to keep on detailing this. Uh, did you hear that little swoop as I turned the wand? I have absolutely no idea how that got in there because I do not turn it that fast. Right here is how fast I actually carved the wand in real time. So it takes about three, sometimes four hours to carve this wand. Okay, so today we made some excellent progress and we are just about ready now to move on to the wood burning stage. All that has to happen now is to go ahead and give this about 24 to 48 hours of drying time uh, and make sure that the wand isn't going to split. Usually alder doesn't split, but we just want to make sure that it's not going to since it's still pretty wet. Um, we have a little bit more carving work to do here, but other than that, we have gone as far as we can with this project so far today. Uh, now we just need to let it dry and then we'll come back and we'll start wood burning it. Alrighty, thank you for tuning in to the blog for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, you can always check out our blog and see if we have new updates right here on our website, www.firelessforge.shop. Stay tuned and stay well. Take care, everyone.